Hello again everybody, it's Ginger on Wheels here. Thanks for stopping by the channel where we get to test and unbox the latest electrically wheeled gadgets. What you're looking at before you is arguably the best performing 16 inch electric unicycle that money can buy. And thanks to an amazing friend of mine that let me unbox and borrow this wheel, I've been lucky enough to spend the last few days testing this thing and I've got some conclusions I wanna share with you. So let's roll the intro and then I'll go over some of the things that I love and some of the things that I hate about the InMotion V12. Okay, just for starters, let's cover the basics. This is a 16 inch, 1750 watt hour, 100 volt electric unicycle with an advertised range of 120 kilometers. That's around 74 miles. It's got an advertised top speed of around 43 miles per hour, or 70 kilometers, and has a sporty 2500 watt motor that actually peaks closer to 5000 watts. My God. The charge time with the included 2.3 amp charger is around nine hours. In the US, this wheel is currently sold by eWheels with Alien Rides and Free Motion Shop also taking pre-orders. And just a reminder, if you enjoy this video or you wanna check out the specs for yourself, I encourage you to use the affiliate links in the description because they do help support this YouTube channel. With the V12, two of the things that I loved right off the bat are the touchscreen LCD display, which is actually visible and usable in moderate sunlight, and the built-in low-profile kickstand. Both of these features are surprisingly functional considering it's the first production rollout of the V12. Usually on first production wheels we see a lot of broken parts. The fit and finish of this wheel though is superb. It almost feels criminal to rest it facing forward on the front headlight as a kickstand, but you can do that. The kickstand is so easy to deploy in the rear though there's really no reason not to use it. As I mentioned earlier, the LCD display is very intuitive. It's got no messy menus, and it allows you to adjust most of the same parameters as the InMotion app, so you don't have to bust out your phone to do something simple like change from commuter to off-road mode. So those are a couple things I liked, but one thing I hated about this wheel was the setup. Out of the box, the wheel comes to you in transportation mode, and I had a nearly impossible time getting it to function normally. I plugged it in, reinstalled the app, made a new InMotion account, lifted the wheel, no matter what I did, I couldn't get the wheel to connect to my phone, so at around 5 in the morning I invited a friend over, don't ask me why he was awake, but after a couple hours messing with the wheel, it randomly decided to connect to his phone. We still don't know why, and it was more than likely just an issue with my phone or both of our phones. I only heard this happening with two other people, but it's still an annoying issue that's worthy enough to mention. One other small problem that this wheel had that was probably a one-off was that the inner tube was not seated correctly and it caused the wheel to bounce while riding. It took a little bit of elbow grease to fix, and it didn't make the wheel totally unrideable, but it was certainly annoying on a new $2,000 gadget. On the plus side though, this wheel does have a great headlight. It's got high and low beams, and there's absolutely no complaints there for me. In fact, I'd say the light is above average for EUCs. The trolley handle is also very functional and easy to use. It does seem like it could come unclipped and break off in a crash though, so be careful. Similar to other wheels, this wheel does have Bluetooth speakers, but unlike other EUCs, they're built into the frame somehow, so I guess that adds waterproofing and crash resistance. It's a pretty cool feature though. The music does seem to emit from the rear end of the wheel. That was kind of annoying and it was hard to listen to while riding. It would be nice if the speakers were in front of the wheel, or better yet, facing upward at the rider somehow. Okay, now for one of the more exciting features of this wheel. It has actually got adjustable pedal height. There are three pedal heights to choose from. You've got lower pedal hangers for more planted high speed riding, higher pedals for more nimble or off-road rides, or a middle level if you're like me, you just want the best of both worlds or you're too lazy to change them. For what it's worth, the rods that were holding the pedals on were really stiff though. It took me about a half hour to change them on the first try, so I can definitely see why you wouldn't want to be doing that all the time. As is standard for a lot of in-motion wheels, the V12 has customizable LED lights on both sides. The LEDs can be customized using the in-motion app, but it also has this cool feature where the lights will play along with the music and it's pretty fun to watch. I do like that this wheel has easily accessible off-road and commuter modes, and you can easily change between the modes or the pedal sensitivity from the LCD screen. But what I don't like is the amount of leverage the wheel gives you to use the power that it has. The pedals that the wheel comes with are really small, for me especially. Granted I have big feet, but unless you wear a proper small size shoe then your feet are going to hang off the pedals some. They feel similar to the pedals on the InMotion V8, and if you recall most people upgraded those to the V10 pedals. If you have size 11 feet or bigger, I'd look into a pedal upgrade for sure. Now one of the things that I initially didn't like about this wheel was the smallish size battery. It's only got 1750 watt hours, which is smaller than my MSP. I imagined I'd get about 40 miles range on it because when I'm really pushing my MSP or RS, that's about the range I get on those wheels. 
but I didn't get a chance to do a full range test on this V12, but I did ride it for over 30 miles and I still had 35% battery left. So there's definitely some range in the V12 tank for bigger guys like me. Okay, now let's talk about the most subjective aspect of this wheel and probably the one you're looking forward to me talking about the most, how the wheel actually rides. So for reference, I'm six foot one inches tall, 200 pounds, got size 13 feet, and I love to ride my other wheels. So I've got the Sherman and the RS, and I ride them as quickly as they will let me. I was initially really skeptical of the V12 because of how small the tire is. Just didn't seem like it was in my wheelhouse, no pun intended. Uh, in my experience, EUCs with smaller wheels like this are just too squirrely for me, especially above 25 miles per hour. But when you got a wheel that's going 43 like this one, I was definitely a little bit skeptical to get on. In all honesty for this review, I was expecting to toot around on it, imagine what it would be like for a smaller rider to ride, and then give a short review, but I found myself surprised by this wheel and the performance. I can still overpower it without pads, but it's really hard to do. It's got an insane amount of power, it's got way more torque than something like an S18 or even a 16X, and is much, much faster. The body, as you can see, extends off the top of the tire by quite a bit, and it makes the wheel skinnier and taller, and I was expecting it to feel really top-heavy as a result, but I was pleasantly surprised. I'm not sure what the inside layout looks like, but they managed to format the wheel in such a way that it's surprisingly level and planted. Maybe it was just me, but the narrow body also made it really easy to ride backwards too. Overall, I really enjoyed the wheel. It surprised me in almost every aspect of how it rides, and I quickly turned from team no way to team all day on the V12. If I weren't such an adrenaline junkie for technical off-road stuff, or I just didn't want to blow a fortune on a brand new wheel, I could definitely see myself pre-ordering this as an option. And that's coming from a big guy like me. I can only imagine this wheel gets more fun the smaller you get. But don't let the small tire fool you, this wheel is full of features and really packs a punch. 